Hey, hi, I'm Chris and Chris, and welcome to So Cool Science, science you can do right at home. I'm just out here on a snowy day and going over today's science file. And today's science file, it says... If it snows 10 inches, does that mean we got 10 inches of rain? Well, that's a great question. Try this. You will need a container with a lid, some snow, and a cooking pot. Okay, head outside into the snow. Bring with you, outside, a container that has a lid on it. And we're gonna collect some snow. Oh yeah, and by the way, you don't want a whole pack of snow in there. You, you, know, you don't need a pack of it. Okay, here we go. Okay, now you are gonna take your snow and you're gonna dump it in a pot. Oh, by the way, you don't need to cook this until, you know, it boils. You just need to melt the snow and it won't take that long. Here we go. Now pour your water into the same snow bucket. Whoa! Now would you look at that? That is super amazing. The level of water is not the same as the snow. <laughs> that, that, that's so look at cool! So, why does the snow level shrink down to that small amount of water? And it's not because of evaporation, because you clearly saw the pot did not shoot off any steam. So, why does it happen? Well, don't look at me. Take a closer look. At this. <laughs> the reason the water level is lower than the snow level is because the snowflakes don't hold a lot of water and they trap air between them as they build up on the ground. When you melt the snow, you separate the air from the water. If we measure the snow before it's melted, we have 15 centimeters. When we measure the melted snow, we get 1.9 centimeters of water. If we divide 1.9 centimeters by 15 centimeters, we get 0.126 or a 12 to 1 ratio which roughly means for every 30 centimeters of snow, you get two and a half centimeters of water. This ratio of 12 to 1 can change depending on the temperature the snow formed at, as well as how much moisture is in the snow. Snowflakes start out as water vapor in the air that condense onto dust and other particles in the atmosphere. As more water vapor condenses on these crystals, they become heavier and fall. The shape of the snowflake depends on what the temperature of the water vapor freezes at, as well as the different temperature columns of air these crystals fall through as they make their way to the ground. So now you know how snowflakes form. You know, making a snow gauge right at home is why science is so cool.